Hi, I'm Daniel Gross with Newsweek, and welcome to the first installment of Economics 101. If it seems like the sky is falling, well, it could be because it kind of is. There's not a whole lot we can do for your 401k, but we can help you understand what's going on in the larger economy. So our first lesson is the Consumer Price Index, also known as the CPI. The textbook definition of the CPI is a measure of how the price of goods and services changes over time. Imagine you have a big shopping cart where you throw in all the stuff that you consume. You know, a loaf of bread, a gallon of milk, and then things you spend on regularly, like cell phone service or college tuition or rent. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, assigns a weight to each of those items based on how much the typical American spends on each of those items. So in a given month, if the weighted price of the stuff in our collective shopping cart goes up, the CPI rises. If it goes down, the CPI declines. Economists always warn never to make too much out of a single data point, especially when it includes highly volatile things like the price of energy or the price of food. Instead, what matters is the long-term trend. So in October, the CPI fell 1.0%. That's pretty rare for it to fall that much in a single month. Over the past three months, the CPI has fallen at an annual rate of 4.4%. That's a sign that a lot of the inflationary energy has been taken out of the economy, that the rapid fall in prices of things like energy, remember $150 per barrel oil? It's now at 50. And food have taken some of the inflationary pressures away. The upshot of all of this is that we, consumers, and the Federal Reserve, our central bank, perhaps should not be quite as worried about inflation as we were last month or even a few months ago. The next release of the CPI for November will come out in December. I'm Daniel Gross with Newsweek.